Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I got a special treat for you. We're going to be doing a product showcase where we're going to be looking at a special plugin that allows you to sync your Jira Cloud instance with Azure DevOps. So if you have teams that work in both and they just need to talk to each other, maybe you have a client, maybe you have a customer that is using a different tool, but you want your Jira to talk to them, or maybe you just have different teams that work on different tools, but you, they need to be able to sync with each other. Well, this plugin is going to make your life a whole lot easier. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you drop a like if you get value out of the video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. Let's jump into this product showcase. We're going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly and tell you if this is actually worth your time and money. So first off, this is the application that we're taking a look. You're going to want to go over to the Atlassian Marketplace and you're gonna to wanna to put in Azure DevOps for Jira integration, comma, migration, enterprise. Now, I already added this application. It does have a fee. It is a paid version, but it is worth its weight in gold because having to manually sync Jira's and Azure DevOps's is a very, very time consuming process. So being able to just set up a tool that automatically takes care of it is worth it, trust me. So once you have it set up, all you need to do is click on apps over here and you will see that you have it as an option. So we're doing the Jira to Azure integration. And this interface I really, really like because it's actually quite simple. I've used other syncing tools, but this one's like really, really easy to use. I haven't had a problem with it at all. And I've been using it for a few months now for other syncs that I've done for other teams. So once you're inside the interface, you're just gonna wanna create an integration. Now my tip here is that you're gonna wanna do an integration for each project that you want to sync. You can do a bulk, you can do a, a bunch together, but I recommend that you do one at a time. That way, if something goes wrong, it's easier for you to troubleshoot. And if you ever need to change something or, or tweak something, it's just easy to go to that specific line item. Now, when you are doing your selection here, you're gonna have to pick between a continuous sync or a migration. This is where things get a little bit, you do need to make a very, very important decision. So let's take a quick little time out to talk about the difference between the migration and the continuous sync. The migration is for companies that want to migrate data from one tool to another. Usually this is like a one-time type of project. They simply decided to use another software or they, maybe they were bought out by another company and they merged and so now all that data, all that historical data needs to come over from one tool to the other. So that's the case when you're going to want to do the migration. Now for everybody else, especially all the use cases that I've always been a part of, we have two different teams that just need to talk to each other and we need to get Jira and some other tools, specifically in this case, Azure, to be in sync. So whenever I create something in one tool, I want it to be pushed to the other. And so that's when you're gonna wanna make sure that you're using the constant sync so that those two tools are synced together and always talking to each other. And hopefully that helps clarify the difference between the continuous sync or the migration. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna focus on continuous sync because that's usually the one I set up. And the continuous sync basically just means that the moment that one issue changes in one instance, it'll go and be reflected in the other. Now, so it'll keep them synced. But any issue that is created will also go over and it'll get pushed out to the other instance. So then they're just basically in sync. So any changes in one environment or the other, again, depending on how you set it up, is going to take effect. So we're just gonna click on continuous sync here. And then all we need to do is not connect our apps. Now the first app is gonna be your source. This is going to typically be your Jira. And so you're just gonna to wanna to put in the URL. Now, they also have really, really good videos and documentation that helps you set this all up. So it's really easy to get going and installed. I've been able to do this just by simply watching their videos. So I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel by basically recreating their videos. So I recommend go watch their videos so that you can see how to set it up. One tip that I will tell you though, when you are setting this up, you are going to want to use a different user or a different account. You do not want to use this using your name or your account because all of the synchronization, all of the going back and forth and all the data that comes back and forth between the two tools, at least on the Jira side, we're gonna be testing this in the Azure DevOps side later, but at least from the Jira side, from what I've seen and done in the past, is the person who sets up this connection, the person that's filling out this 
this connecting app here, that's the person who's gonna be the face of all these interactions and it can be confusing. So I recommend that you create a new account like Jira Helper or Jira Sync and just make a new kind of almost like a service account type of situation because otherwise you're gonna to have to just live with the fact or communicate to your team that Alex is the one that's doing all the things but he's not the actual one that you should be talking to. You should be talking to the right person. So this is kind of like the only drawback. Now it is an inconvenience just because of the nature of two, having two different tools talk to each other, right? Now you could, in a perfect world, if you had the same users in both tools, then you would essentially um, it'd be like a very clean one-to-one. -one. But at that point, what's the point of using the sync tool, right? Just bring everybody to one tool. So clearly that I don't think that that's gonna be the use case for most people. I think for most people, they're gonna have like clients on one side and a internal team in, in Jira and the client wants to see what's in Jira or vice versa. So the users over there don't need to exist over here. And so naturally your Jira just needs to know like, hey, I still need to assign it to somebody and it still needs to be, we still need to have a reporter. So you're gonna have to fill that out. So if you, again, if you don't wanna cause confusion, use a new account, create a new account like Jira Helper, Jira Sync or something of that nature because otherwise it's gonna be Alex. Alex is gonna do it all and um, I've already seen people get confused and again, you just gotta communicate it out. It's a people problem, not a tool problem. Um, but again, it's just the nature of, of getting two different tools, different, different tools talking to each other. Once you've gotten your API and you pick your email and all that stuff, again, I skipped over that just because you don't need to see that information for my, for my instance. But once you do make your connection, another pro tip here is it's gonna ask you for a name. Now, once you do have your connection, again, I, I just left the connection to Jira, not a big deal here. You're gonna wanna pick your project. So you're gonna wanna pick a project. It doesn't matter which one you do. Now, internally though, for your specific use case, you are most likely going to have an example. You're most likely gonna know already, like, hey, this is my team's internal project. I needed to talk to that Azure instance. And so for the most part, you should already know which project. I'm just randomly picking one because I don't really care. I'm just doing the review here. But um, internally though, or when you're doing this in production, you're definitely gonna wanna do this for realsies. Now the custom JQL here, this part is what allows you to essentially control which issues actually come over or don't. For example, let's just say that you have a project that you have your team internally, they're working on five or six different clients. And so you don't want the issues from your project to go to all five or six clients. And you definitely don't want client A to see client B, C, and D's issues, right? And so you're gonna wanna be very prescriptive here and you can use like a custom field or you can use a label and say, hey, if if label equals client A, then this issue will go over to Azure. Otherwise, they don't go. And this is really, really smart. You wanna be able to set something like this up because you might not be in a situation where you wanna go one for one, right? Like you don't want every issue in Jira to go to Azure and vice versa. You might need to be prescriptive with that. And this right here, this custom JQL, is where you're able to do that. Now, I'm gonna leave it blank because again, I'm just doing an experiment here. I don't really particularly care too much but you are gonna to wanna to pay special attention. Now, when we connect to the destination, this is the second one over here on the right, you're gonna click on connect app. This time we're gonna pick Azure DevOps, but as you can see here, there's a bunch of different ones and spoilers, we might be doing a service now in the near future, but that is, that you're gonna to have to subscribe and make sure you come back for more, but we'll select that for now. And again, I'm just going to essentially put in my name here Okay, so right here is where I was talking about earlier. Once you put the URL, it's gonna ask you to give it a name. Again, give it a distinct name <laughs> because if you don't, especially when you do like a Jira to Jira, which is another integration that they offer, they're gonna, they're both gonna say connection to Jira. And so you're gonna go, which one's which? So if you're doing um, Azure and Jira, um, this is out of the box, I didn't configure this, so it is gonna automatically know. Uh, whether you're you're doing Azure or Jira. So this is okay. Um, it's distinct enough to know that there's two different connections. But I definitely know that when you're doing Jira to Jira, it's gonna say connection to Jira and connection to Jira. And so you're gonna wanna give it a distinct name. And after that, I'm just gonna put my information. Okay, so once you set up and you do authenticate using the APIs, again, follow their instructions. They're really, really good instructions. Everything's super clear. It takes seconds to do. I just don't wanna share that information with you all for obvious reasons. And you're gonna do something similar on the Azure DevOps. You're just gonna pick a project. Again, my same spiel about, hey, you wanna be intentional. And so in this particular case, you are gonna to want to, again, work maybe with your client or with your other team to make sure that you're setting up things correctly. 
And here you can see you can do an additional query, which again, you're gonna pick specific, you can cherry pick. Now I'm just gonna leave the defaults because I don't really care for this particular review, but that's it. So once you have this set up, you basically have the basics. You, you're kind of good to go, but you're not really quite there. So the next and final step here is that you just need to start connecting the actual data because now we are all we've established up to this point is we have a connection between the APIs and the tools and this and this integration. But nothing's going to be coming over just yet. Even though we've called out which projects, this tool still doesn't know what to actually sync. So the first thing we're going to want to do is you're going to want to select the type. So on the source, you go over here. This is where you're going to want to pick. Are we doing a task, a story? What are we doing over here? And then on the Azure side, well, you got to map it to something. So what's it going to be on the Azure side? So in Azure, I'm just going to make it a task as well. Now you are going to get this little warning. So you can see that it's like, hey, this is still not working because you got to map things. So we're going to click into this little pencil here. And then the, the out of the box, what you get is your title, basically the summary in Jira and a description. So those are just automatically what you get the moment you set up the integration. But the statuses, that's what's going to be a little bit more interesting. So over here, you have to go get your status on the left. Now, we are going to match status with status, which is fine. This is this is good. But down here under the map options, you got to then pick your status. So like to do, right? So if I pick my to do in Jira, what is my to do over in Azure? So once you do that, you basically map them, you click add. Now this part is a little annoying. I mean, it's it's a necessary evil, right? But you got to you got to go through each one. So it's that it's annoying from that respect. But what I really, really like is that the moment that you do the mapping, it goes away. So you no longer are going to have to uh, set this up. So let's say you get yourself into a situation where one tool, your Jira in this case, has a status, PO accepted or whatever status that may be, but you've run out of statuses to map on your destination tool. Well, worry not, you're not actually stuck here. This tool is smart enough to let us map multiple statuses to one status on the other side. So this is really, really cool, really, really interesting because rather than depending on a one to one mapping, a to do to a to do, you can do multiple statuses on one side and then pick a category or a status that is appropriate on the destination side. So let me show you how to do this. So I'm going to take this PO accepted. And as you can see, there's nothing else to match to. But all I have to do is in my in progress, because PO accepted is technically an in progress status, in my opinion, we're just going to click that option here. And as you can see, I now have two statuses on the left that are going to be mapped to that doing. And that's all you got to do. Hit apply and you're ready to go. You're going to want to come into the synchronization with a game plan. You're going to want to already know what issue types do we want to bring? What fields are we going to want to sync? And what do our statuses slash workflow look like between the two different tools? Because if you get this far and then you're figuring it out, then you're just going to be wasting time. So you are going to want to basically put on your little architecture hat here and you're going to want to think about what, how and what we want to migrate before you get this far. Cause otherwise you're just going to be wasting some time. Now, I'm just going to leave the task again. I, they have in-depth videos and it's very repetitive. One little tip that I'll give you here though, is if you click on this one, you can click, click on copy configuration. And then when you go make a new one, so if, uh, let's just say I'm going to do like the story next and I go over here and I'm going to bring like issue. You can actually click on these ellipses and then click on use configuration. And that's basically the paste. So it's not the clearest, um, but I want to let you know that that is essentially how you copy and paste. And so now when I click on this little pencil here, what you'll see is that my statuses are already mapped. So that's my little pro tip, because if you're going to be doing a lot of different issue types, you don't want to be sitting there and doing that mapping over and over and over. Unless you get paid by the hour, then, you know, watch some paint dry. But <laughs> ethically, um, you're going to want to uh, just copy paste for efficiency. Once you're done with that, all you got to do then is just give it a name. Right. So I like to do like um, Jira and then something like this to Azure and then you just hit create. And so once you hit create, you're done. All you got to do is now put it to action. So you just got to go into Jira and you're going to go create an issue and then watch it go over to Azure. And now that we've created this integration, now it is time to test it. So we're going to go back into Jira and we're going to try this out with the Jira issue. Now I'm going to be over here back in my project. So I'm going to pick any random story. So I'm going to pick this retrieve many options from database. And I am most importantly going to add the label because when I add my label, that is when Jira is going to know that this is the label for the issues that it wants to move. 
Because if it doesn't meet the criteria, if it doesn't meet the criteria that I've set for my connection and that integration, then it's gonna ignore it and it's not going to sync over. And this is an optional step. You don't have to do it this way. You can just sync everything. You can do every issue that's in Jira over to Azure, or you can specify only the ones that meet a cer certain criteria, whether they're a custom field or in this case, a label. So I've added the label of client A, and I'm gonna pull up my integration over here. As you can see, I'm just gonna make sure that this is all spelled the same, client A. I'm gonna hit close. This project is ready to go. And so all I'm gonna do now is click on the save button. Now I'm gonna click on this little gear and now I'm going to wait. This runs every few minutes and so it's not instantaneous. It's gonna take a couple of seconds here. So just bear with me for one second while the sync happens again and you're gonna see that the issue came over and then we're gonna go over to Azure and we're gonna confirm that it is indeed there. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a run number 27. I'm gonna click on this and you can see that JSM 2-10 triggered this. I'm going to be able to click on it. You can see here that the title is Retrieve Menu Options from Database. If you remember correctly, that's the issue that I started over here. So this JSM 2-10 is the one that triggered it and now it's happened over here. So that all looks really, really good. And then you can see that it got synced with number 11 and that's basically issue number 11 that is now in Azure. So let's go over to Azure. I'm just gonna click on this link here and here we are, issue number 11, retrieve many options from database. As you can see, this is the exact same issue that we had over in Jira software. So now this is working. Now any changes that I do to the title or the summary is going to be then reflected back over in Jira and they're gonna just be talking to each other vice versa. So this will make your life infinitely easier. So if you found this video valuable, make sure you use the link in the description down below Go start a trial, go test this one out. I'm telling you the price is worth it because just having to do this manually is a big giant headache and being able to have the tool automatically sync your two different products, whether it's Jira to Jira or Jira Azure as we have it in this case, or again, make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like because we are gonna be doing a different integration with the future tool in the near future. You're gonna wanna make sure you check it out and make sure you come back. So that's it for this video. Again, make sure you use the description down below, start a free trial, leave them a review, and show this vendor the power of the internet. Go make sure you start a trial, and I'll see you in the next one. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need